Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy and welcome back to Jimmy Does Knitting. Uh, this is a podcast where I usually pick a theme related to my knitting world and we talk about it. Today we have a decent amount to talk about, uh, including, I want to hit on pride, the saga of the slutty summer shirts again. <laughs> it still continues, we're still going forward with that. And then um, maybe some acquisitions if we have some time at the end, it depends how long it goes, but I've been doing some shopping. I typically don't show acquisitions. But here we go. I, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I have an eye infection, so it might look like I have a watermelon <laughs> growing out of my eye. I think I got some sunscreen in it yesterday. It was uh, Worldwide Knit in Public Day, and I went to a thing called Knits and Notes here in Amsterdam. It was a nice little gathering, but I was out in the sun and I was frying, and I regularly applied some sunscreen, and I think it just got in my eye. And that's, I don't know how it goes but I didn't get burnt I just have a little bit of a goopy eye we'll leave it at that I don't know if anybody wants to go for it um if you want to follow me there's uh Instagram which is stereo underscore bait there's my Ravelry which is Jimmy, Jimmy does knitting and anything else I have some comprehensive show notes that I'm going to put in the bottom here if you put the show more on the carrot at the bottom you can see the patterns that I'm discussing about and the yarn that I'm discussing everything with. And I think that is, that is it for the admin. Uh, I'm gonna put some timestamps on this one because I want to talk about Pride. It's June, it's currently like June 11th now. This is the first podcast that I've filmed in June, but I wanted to make sure that we talk about this because this is something that's obviously quite important to my life. And therefore, if you want to skip this, you can skip to the timestamp below. I think I'm going to put some chapters in. If you are skipping it, I would encourage you to figure out why you're skipping it. I know, obviously, this is a knitting podcast and people don't like to get too political. And I don't particularly like to get super political, but it's pride. I'm very gay, so we're going to talk about it for a little bit. Um, what I wanted to say about pride is... Happy Pride to everybody, and that includes everybody on the LGBT plus spectrum and to those allies that really support us. And by support us, I mean help with um, supporting LGBT plus businesses and people. And if you say that you're, you know, supporting this, but you are part of a group or an institution or a political affiliation or support people that do not support pride, then maybe you probably aren't. Like, um, make sure that you fully support it. I don't really be like, oh, this person's great, but he hates gays. Uh, especially because a lot of you, I think, are female identifying that watch this. And they're coming for you as well. So we have to all be together to raise the boat and to make people, you know, like have better lives and really do that. And I think that the knitting community has really unique opportunity because it is largely like minorities in terms of um, sex and um, like potential gender identification or whatever it may be. And I think it's really important to just support each other with everything. By doing that, I wanted to discuss some charities that I'm supporting for Pride. Um, that's a little bit off my soapbox. Um, I like to try to highlight the good things and ways that we can make a difference. And so one of those ways is by supporting people either financially or um, with your time, whatever it may be. And I'm going to go through a couple and say why. Um, but also, if you want to support the gays, give this video a like, like, tell me something good, um, share a wonderful experience, like, that also helps. So it doesn't have to be full of, like, money or hardcore political action, but I think it is important to recognize and make that effort in the way that suits you at this time. Sorry about that. Mr. Dez Knitting came back from the gym and was making a bunch of noise. So let's start over. Um, there are a couple of things that I'd like to really focus on in terms of my charitable giving. One, I like to do things that are local to an area. I figure if I can make a difference in a particular area, 
that that's a little bit better and then that can spread as opposed to really going everything like wide. And I also think that for me personally, that like food and shelter are basic needs that people have. So I really like to give to charities that help with that. And that's sort of like in general what I want to do. So the first charity that I donated to was the Ruth Ellis Center. It is a LGBT um, center in Detroit. And that's where I grew up. I don't really know of any here in the Netherlands, so I focus money on that in, um, I think that that area is really good. So like during Thanksgiving, I give to the food bank in Detroit and, and that sort of thing where it's like, I don't know, maybe trying to make a little bit of a difference in the community that I grew up in, especially because it is, it was not a great community to grow up in to be uh, on the queer spectrum. So I think that making more visibility and supporting people there really helps. Uh, they really do great things. They do community programs. They also have like balls and make things fun for people. And they do provide some housing and assistance for youth in need, which I think is super, super, super important. So that's why I donate to the Ruth Ellis Center. Another one that I focus on is the okra project. It specifically makes like culturally appropriate food for LGBT individuals. Usually the target audience is trans people, but particularly like female identifying trans folk of color. And it not only gives them the jobs to cook the food, but then it also gives people like access to the food that they, they make. And I think that that fits in with the food and it helps the most vulnerable of LGBT+, plus, which is trans women of color. So that's something that I regularly give to. Uh, another one that I gave to is called Knit the Rainbow. It's a knitty charity. They do stuff with like community crafts and but they also help like uh, LGBT youth with getting warm clothes if they need it, if they're homeless or if they're doing whatever. So I would check them out. And um, one that I, I normally don't donate to like legal organizations and stuff, but because of everything that's happening, I thought it was important to give a little bit of money to the ACLU this time and support specifically their Drag Defense Fund because we need to support the most vulnerable in our community. And the drag queens and kings are really super, super, super important. They're the ones that flew the first stone at Stonewall, they're the ones that really push hard and I don't think that they're represented enough and that they don't get the credit they deserve because of people that look like me, like cis white guys. And it's important to make sure that they're okay and that they're supported and that we're, we're doing all that we can for them. So that's my little pride thing. Everybody celebrate, enjoy, Maybe instead of buying something from a corporation, you buy something from um, an LGBT plus creator themselves or just donate to somewhere. So instead of buying a pride shirt at t-shirt or pride t-shirt at Target, maybe you want to just give that money to something else. Just saying, you can do whatever you want. So now back to regularly scheduled programming. We have knittings and to be honest, it's kind of gay because we're talking about the slutty summer tops again, which is one of my favorite things. It is like the one week of summer we have in Amsterdam, so I missed the boat a little bit, but I think that we're going to get there and then there's some travels coming up in the summer, so I'll be able to use them as well as um, some other things, but let's go through it. I have four that I'm working on. I have one that I frogged, which I have a sample of. Hold on one second. I need these. Where did it go? My swatch box. This one. So, first things first is there was this one that I swatched for and I started. It was just sort of an eyelet, um, black, Thing. It was with onion nettle sock yarn and I was going to make just a simple vest out of it with eye cords and I might at one point but there was something else that caught my mind so I started this I got about like that far into it and I 
frogged it. So that's like the biggest thing since the the last slutty summer shirt video. It's it's a nice fabric and stuff. I just wasn't feeling it. I mean, it was self designed too, so I had like no pressure for like a pattern. I have a ton of yarn. I can do something else with it, and I took it apart. But I continued experimenting, and the first thing that we experimented with was this. This is the drop stitch pattern. This was a self-design. This is with like a worsted weight. It is with drops, Bulma Lin. Um, this is the black one. I don't know exactly what color it is, but it's like uh, five millimeters, 17 stitches in 10 centimeters, four inches. It's 53% cotton and 47% linen. So it is a bit drapey, it is quite heavy. Honestly, I don't know why I bought this. I don't like lit knitting with something that's so plant fibery because it drapes and it's a little less control. Like I need like more wool in my life. It's just a preference, no judgment on anybody else. But I swatched and I came up with this, um, this drop stitch thing and I'd seen something online and then I was like, oh, I need to recreate it. So I did and it became a vest. I was gonna make it long sleeve, but because the fabric is like linen and cotton, it's drapey. I don't particularly like it. Like it's fine. I, I didn't think that a worsted weight would be the best for this one. So this is sort of an experiment that's going to live like it is and I don't even know if I'll ever wear it, but I, I'm glad I tried it out because I, yeah, like I, I like the, the design, I like the idea of it, but this particular version was not working for me. Partially fabric choice, partially because of waste, of, of the weight of the yarn. So there's that, which is a completed object, I guess, but um, never to be worn. What we did do though, is I went shopping and I saw online basically that in a DK weight thing from Pickles, which is a Norwegian yarn shop and pattern place. It has really cool patterns. I really like their patterns, but you had to buy their yarn in order to get patterns. And basically the pattern I wanted was what I just showed you, but in like a DK weight. And so I bought the pattern. I got one ball of cotton merino yarn. It's okay. I haven't actually touched it. It came like three weeks after I, I got the pattern. The patterns are written in Norwegian and then there's an English translation afterwards. And I basically bought it because I didn't want to math up the DK weight version of this thing. And I, I should have just done it myself. And I will tell you because the pattern is, there's some translation issues, but also like just the setup of it doesn't math. Like, you know, like the, the math doesn't math. They want like a DK weight yarn knit stock and net at like 18 stitches per four inches, 10 centimeters, but like on a 3.5 millimeter needle, like there's no way that you can get the gauge. And even when you do get the gauge, they say like cast on X amount of stitches for the the garment you need. And like that math just doesn't like work. Like that's the hard part of the math, like in terms of like what size do I cast on? So I did an educated guess when I cast on myself and I, I think I'm okay. And we'll talk about the modifications and also the, the pattern's not well written and it's not, you know, like Norwegian patterns typically, like when I knit that full like color work sweater that I did, um, that was a Norwegian pattern and it was like three pages long. So sometimes they don't really give you a lot of information, but this one doesn't like, it's just not well written. Like it, it's, it's a little confusing, and if the pictures weren't there, even I, who did like a prototype of this thing, would be like a little confused. And there's just some ways, some of it's like a translation issue, and some of it's just like, 
I don't know, like one, one time it says like, oh, and uh, like work on the left side. And then immediately it says, go to the right side and work the right side. And it was like, I, I don't know. So it's a educated guess. Plus it was written, written for a, a woman's body. And I like something a little different that fits me a little bit different. So I had to redo the row counts and the, the things anyway. So it, it doesn't, it's a good, it's a good guide of a pattern, but I would say you have to be pretty advanced in order to use this one because you just have to figure it out. It's not tremendously clear. And it's like five pages of the English version or something to get you to it. So I'm like, why does this? I don't know. I don't really know. But this is living in the one bougie project bag that I have. And this is my hide and hammer bag. It's yellow, it's sort of like a mustard color. If it's not black, I really like that color. Or like some obnoxious pink, maybe. And I have finished... I have finished the body. And because of the patterns, you can see this is this very, 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 very thin. And it's knitting up quite nicely and really fast. Because what you do is there's like... I can't give it all away, but basically there's this like stitch that you drop with everything. And that means essentially you knit less stitches. So it goes really fast. It uses not as much yarn and you go through it. So this is for me, believe it or not, this is a blue top that I intend to wear over the summer. And this is, I still, I'm going to modify it to have like eye cord neck and like cuffs and hem, but it's coming along well. I started with a provisional cast on so I could just pick up the eye cord from there and then go from there. So just like the other one, it has this like, I don't know if you can see this well or not, but this dropped stitch that goes through the hem and trigger warning, this is what you do. You take your knitting, so like let's say this, and you can see that there's some drop stitches and then you just like tug and pull at it and you unravel your knitting as you, in order to make it. And I haven't unraveled everything because I know that it, the math works out. So like, this is not going to, to fall, but um, yeah, I, I take it apart and I uh, like, that's how you do it. So if this scares the bejesus out of you, also, I'm not so sure that this is a pattern for you, but I really like it. I really like the effect and I, um, it's fun to pull these apart, right? And it's a little scary, but also great because, I don't know, I think it has a wonderful effect and it's going to fit well. Right now, this is like negative, negative ease, but uh, it fits me pretty well. The yarn I'm using, I got at Stephen and Penelope because I had a gift card and I was like, you know what? I needed to buy some other yarn for another project that's coming up. And I was like, I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to get some bougie, bougie, bougie yarn. And I was really drawn to this color. And I was like, I can make this work. I can make this work. So what I did is I picked up three skeins of Life in the Long Grass. This is the color Stellar and it's really beautiful. It's like a hand dyed, but it's fairly tonal. I mean, there is slight variation, but overall it's not going to make a difference in terms of like feeling fairly solid because I mean my skin's going to show through and also the the drop stitches are gonna see this is so much fun are gonna um make a bit of a difference this is I think it's super wash merino which I'm not yeah it's 100% super wash merino wool this is their singles base I'm not the biggest fan of Superwash, but I also really did like this color and I was like, let's go for it. And with Superwash, I can put this, if, I, if it gets too big, at least I can put it in the dryer and we can make it smaller. Unlike the linen stuff, that's really just going to be what it is. So I can control this a little bit. The plan is wearing this out on like a beautiful day like today. And maybe going to um, the like a canal and swimming or um, out on like a lake or the swimming pool and that way I can throw this thing on afterwards and we can just chill. Uh, 
Yeah. And if it gets wet and it expands, that's cool. Then I can just like throw it in the laundry and wash it. I'm probably a light dry. And then I think we can go well. Although this feels for super wash yarn, this feels a little like sticky. I don't know if you can see this well, but it's like a little fuzzy. It, I think it's like a two ply, but it's like really tightly like woven. It's not just a single ply here. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a nice yarn. I like working with it. It's really soft, especially because I use a lot of holst and this is like, ooh, what is this? And it's a very pretty color. So like I said, modifications, I did a provisional, provisional cast on so I can pick it up and I can do the I cord. I knit the body longer because I wanted a longer body. It said like 12 inches, which is like maybe this, which is, it's, it's just, I, I'm not wearing a crop top. I don't want a crop top. Um, I'm going to do I-cord edging. And then what I did is they wanted to Kitchener stitch the, the shoulders together, which honestly makes like a really nice finish. But because this is so holy and like kind of drapey, even though it's 100% wool, um, I wanted it to be a little bit more solid and a little bit more structured. So I turned it inside out and I did a three needle bind off, um, just so it's a little, little bit more seamy. I don't know. Seams add structure. Don't be afraid to knit things in pieces and seam it. Specifically collars. I tend to like to do a collar, bind off, and then do it. Or if I'm knitting top down, I will do the stitches that I will cast on the stitches that I need to do after the ribbing, then knit a row and then increase. And then I can do the collar because that way I can rip it out if it gets gross or, or whatever. And it holds things up. It doesn't like, especially top down raglans with the just seamless, it just, it, they grow over time. That's the nature of things. And I don't necessarily want that, I you know, I don't know, especially if like makeup or something, you're gonna want to replace the neckband at one point, or instead of like putting elastic in, you can just redo it. And I think that that, that's probably, anyway, it's what works for me. Try it, don't try it, it's all right. This is tremendously fun. I've been on doing this the whole time we're talking, just kind of grabbing at it um, to make this really beautiful full effect. And I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be, this is on hold slightly for now, and it's going to be picked up later and you will see why in the next episode and yeah but i'm very much looking forward to this garment i think it will look very nice on me with the summer i've been doing a lot of yoga especially now like i'm unemployed so i don't really have an excuse not to do yoga like seven days a week i have a subscription that's monthly it's unlimited so i can go to all the classes that i want and i think i will because I can and I really enjoy it. Um, that's also why I have the wet hair. I did Ashtanga this morning and it was wet. Side note, yoga stuff, yoga chat. I typically have my Manduka Eco Travel Mat, which I really, really love. And it's just like a super thin one. I go to the yoga studio, I get one of their mats. I put it down and then I unroll my travel mat onto there. It's light and it, it's grippier than the other mats and plus like I don't know I just think it's gross I don't care how many times people clean it after yoga I really like to so like have my own mat like at least I'm rolling around in my own stank sort of thing and uh so I but I've been using that but recently it's like hot here it's actually hot which is not something that happens often so I switched to my jade yoga like proper mat and it's not it's like it's its own independent mat and that thing works so well I was so sweaty today that the grip on that was really nice and I would recommend it it is flaking off a little bit so I have a little bit of speckles of the mat on me um which isn't the best but in terms of the the grip and how the mat acts it's definitely my new summer yoga mat and I will be using I haven't used it in forever I used it a lot during like yoga teacher training which was like I don't know three four years ago and then um I haven't really used it since because it's just the travel mats are so easy and convenient but um yeah a little bit of insight over my yoga mat preferences and my Unravelry sweater. Did I say that? It's the Unravelry sweater by uh, Pickles of Norway or Pickles Knits. Not, not to be confused with the knitting pickle. 
and that's Laura Penrose, and she did not do this. So mixed reviews on the actual pattern. I really like the style, and I like the um, yarn. Okay, kids, we're back. Mr. Does Knitting wanted to go outside. But we're back. And it's very exciting because we're still talking about summer tops. The next one we want to talk about is also a Stephen and Penelope purchase uh, in terms of the yarn. This is the Onion Pure Cotton. Um, it was actually fairly affordable. I got this for $5.50 a ball. And it's the nicest cotton that I've worked with. As I said, heavy plant fibers is not my favorite thing, but I found this to be quite soft and not so splitty. It, I think onion tends to have, like, it says it's a DK weight. I would say it's a, por a sport weight, maybe even a heavy fingering. Um, there's another yarn that I'm using in the other ones where it says it's like a fingering, but it's very light fingering. So I think that they're, Yarn is of good quality, and I like it, but it's a little on the thinner side, and it's fairly affordable, and, but there is like a yarn barf, the way that it's wound or something, like when you get near the end, it just sort of like falls apart and you have to rewind it just a little bit. Um, this is the 128 brown color, and Mr. Does Knitting picked this out for his new shirt. Um, and what I did, and this might be going out on the day that it launches or not, but I was a lucky enough to be testing for James N. Watts and his Pure Mesh tank. So for those of you that don't know, he has a Pure Mesh pullover, which is really nice. And it's, um, it's basically this stitch, um, but in a, like, a sweater sort of thing. And he made a tank version, and I tested it. There is a little bit of a problem with the pattern, so like one of these sides is a little bit wonky, but it blocked out um, all right, and it's been fixed in the pattern, so no worries about that. Let's walk through. This is a bottom-up tank top, and it's just, you know, you knit in the... It's seamed as well, so you knit the front panel from the bottom uh, all the way up, and you obviously split for the straps, and then you knit the back panel bottom up, uh, you get it on the, um, the shoulders and you seam up the sides and then you just knit I cords for the hem, the armpits, and then the neck. It's really nice. This was a super easy thing to do. I knit it a little bit longer. So it calls for a cropped version, but I did some math and I made it to the same size as a, like a tank top that he already liked. So I knit a hundred rows before starting the armpit de decreases. So that's the, the difference that I made on mine. The rest is just regular pattern um, and how you go through it. And it's the same stitch as the pure mesh pullover. It's a different gauge. I did the pure mesh pullover a while ago. So this is, I think, a thicker yarn being a DK and it uses smaller needles because I think he used a 4.5 on this and I want to see say I used like a eight millimeter on the pure mesh pullover I'm not really quite sure I would have to double check but the point being is it's slightly different but the the way that this is is really really nice and I, I like it it's super super um like airy it has a see-throughness which is really good and it constructed up really fast and the pattern was super clear and I'm really looking forward to the launch and seeing what other testers have done with this. Uh, it was a bit of a weird test because it was just like a Google form as opposed to just like a, I've done one other test so I don't really have a lot to go off of but it was that was a Slack group but I know people have like Discord groups or um, Instagram chat groups or whatever where they go through things. This was sort of like here's the pattern you know, when you're finished, give me this form and, and we'll see. Uh, I did panic a little bit because I did, the one side was off because of the, the mistake in the pattern. And so I was like, I was like, did I test this? And then I did like a shit job and then I, I don't know about it. And like, I'm going to post all this stuff. But it, I think it, it, I mean, it was just the mistake. Um, but so I did freak out a little bit, but overall 
it's fine. It blocked out also because this is negative ease. It actually looks okay. I had to, I do a little bit of fixing, but it was fine. Um, and it looks good on Mr. Does Knitting. If, I'm not sure if this is going to go up before or after I have a chance to take some pictures. So if there are pictures taken, I will put them here. If not, you can check out my Instagram and probably James's Instagram and you can see what this looks like live. It has not been worn yet because we're waiting for the pictures and uh, a particular setting in order to do it. But yeah, this is the Pure Mesh Tank Top. It is by James and Watts and it's a really enjoyable knit. The, the yarn was really good. I actually might make something like this. I know Mr. Does Knitting likes it because he went out shopping this week and bought essentially this um, over again, but in black and with like a, a ribbing or whatever. Um, I was like, I could make that for you. And he goes, I know, but like this costs 20 euros. And I was like, fine, whatever. Uh, so this is the, the Pure Mesh tank. I'd recommend this. Uh, I think a lot of ladies or female identifying people have been knitting it. So I'm happy to show you this on a man's body. This is a little oversized for me and it's supposed to have negative ease so I'm not going to wear it. Also it's not really my color um, but you will you will definitely see this on some social media and you can go from there. So this is a new pattern. Go out, check it out, get it, do all the things, have fun knitting it. It's really enjoyable and you can wear it as is. You can wear it over something. We will be wearing this just as a tank top with some holes in it and enjoying it in the sun. So that is my pure mesh tank top. And then we have one last summer top. And that summer top is another designer that's not on Ravelry. So the pickle stuff wasn't on Ravelry and this designer is Rose Knitwear, R-O-W-S. And I would really recommend the site. Um, she sells patterns. She's a British person. I think she's in Amsterdam. She sells her patterns independently on her website. She has some really, really good ones. She has like a mohair one for the summer that's really good. She has the pattern I'm working on, but like it's like a little cropped cardigan thing. She has this beautiful like um, sweater with like slip stitches and stripes. It's fantastic. Go check it out see everything about her. I This is part of me trying to figure out like other things than just mainstream people. And one of the things that I was drawn about is I haven't seen this stitch pattern before. And let's discuss that first. It's hard for me to tell. Okay, this is the right side. Or maybe I hold this up against the bag so you can really see it. But this is Crazy, 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 crazy. Look at this pattern. It's called the Scribble Top and the link is below. So please go and check it out. It is a beautiful like knit of a pattern and it involves condo knitting, which I was very excited to do. So that's why I have these weird things. Um, for some reason, this is, this is like a slip over thing, but it has a lacy texture. It's not like lace lace because there's no yarn overs, but I can't knit lace on anything but my chow goos. I started my pure mesh on my Addy Clicks. I started this on my Addy Clicks and I cannot do like lace on them. I don't know if it's the needle point. I don't know if it's because the needles are super, super, super slick or what it is, but I, I can't do it. But I have my chow goos, which is really nice and I really like them and I never use the bigger sizes anyway. I really should be knit on like well, ideally, um, you have like a cord with the, the thick end and then there's a um, like a thinner end here. And so maybe if I hold it like this, you like ideally would want to connect them. But because of the chow goos, they have like a large and a small. So this requires a different size cord connector than this one. So they're two separate ones. You could also do this on straight needles. It is, a, it's just going to be like a pretty standard tank top. It's knit bottom up in two pieces and then seamed. It's really beautiful. Like I really like it. I'm hoping this was really hard to come across on camera, 
but I'm hoping that you get it, or at least look in the link and see her more professional pictures than what I've taken. I'm terrible about taking pictures, and obviously showing this is, is quite difficult, especially because I'm wearing black. Um, but it's a really beautiful pattern. It takes forever. I have knit, like, whole cable knit sweaters and, like, um, full color work stuff and like it's not taking as long as this so this is really a labor of love it's a summer shirt so it's actually it's taking a while but like theoretically it's quicker because there's just not as much knitting and also the the 10 millimeter needles when you do that row it goes super fast because it's just straight up knitting with these and it's it's nice and i really like it um what I did have to do is, I don't, we're talking a little bit about acquisitions. I don't say everything about acquisitions. I'm growing my needle collection. And one of the things that I wanted to try was the four inch tips for the Chow Goo. I have a set that I bought. I bought the set. And I have the five inch tips because I have man hands and it just seemed easier. But sometimes I wish that I had slightly shorter tips and I needed the five millimeter tips to make a sweater that I'm making, which we're not talking about today. And I wanted to have that on the needles the same time as I had this on the needles. And that means I needed to buy more tips. So I tried the, I went to the Off Stop, which is a local yarn store to me. It's in the Amsterdam city center. It's within the canal belt. And I got the four inch tips, talked to the lady um it was an interesting conversation because she's like oh you're a real knitter and I was like yeah yeah I really am um but I'm using that for this and the goal is because this goes so slow this is my like knit in public project this is my um slow and steady wins the race project it's not like my favorite thing but the finished garment is going to be absolutely beautiful and I'm really looking forward to that. I knit it in a size that could either be my size or Mr. Does Knitting. So like a little bit of negative ease on him and a little bit oversized on me. And it should work for one of us. I don't know who's going to wear it, but somebody will for sure. And it's going to be beautiful. And like, I'd say I'm probably this, I'm going to block this out slightly. I'm going to steam block it. And I don't know maybe a little bit over halfway through before the split and then like once you split it's like boom done the yarn that i'm using for this this is living in a tote bag that i have so i'm not going to show it because it's not very special is more onion onion yarn so i this is you you can see the yarn bar something about the way that they wind these it doesn't wind really well it doesn't stay in place it's fine. It's whatever. Um, this is their nettle sock yarn. And this is a part of my, I want to do different fibers, try different things, uh, thing this year. So the hundred percent cotton that they had and this, I like that it has the nettle instead of the nylon. I'm really not interested in knitting with like synthetic fibers in terms of like the plastic base. This is like a, you know, it's nettle, so it's machine processed. I doubt that they do this in a tremendously sustainable way, but like, um, I don't know the exact process, so I can't really judge. I'm probably speaking out of turn. It's 70% wool, 30% nettle, and so it has a little bit of that plant fiber. It has the merino fiber. The nettle will make it a little bit more drapey, but I can also um, like wash it and, and, and like process it. And I don't know, I just wanted to try it so far. I think it does, I mean, probably a steam block. I'm scared to like wash wash this because I don't want it to grow so much. I don't know how this will react and I don't know if I can like, no, it says don't put in the thing. Maybe I just wash it in like a, a warm water with a little bit of eucalyptus and try it. I steam block my swatch before, which tend to work really well. And I'm going to do that on this before I, um, before I split for the armpits because it will grow a little bit when I steam block it and I want to make sure that the length is correct. I don't want it to be really long. I want to make sure it's all right. But um, we're experimenting with this yarn and with this stitch and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is and also how it wears and then report it. 
Beck. Now this is more expensive than cotton. I think this was $9.50 a ball. I had to order it somewhere special online. It's a little bit hard to find, but I'm enjoying it so far. And I don't, I'm not a sock knitter. I don't, I'm not a sock yarner. I don't do those hand dyed singles or, or, or whatever it is. So I don't really have much of a frame of reference for the types of yarn this is trying to replace. So I can't really comment so much on it, but so far it's quite enjoyable and I'm enjoying the the idea of it. Um, my only problem with the yarn is that it's yarn barfy, but it's knitting up quite nice. Um, there's some stitch definition and it feels good on my hands and I think it's going to make a really beautiful garment. So that's that. And the pattern is really well written. Um, she, she just does good work. So go please check out her stuff. I think if you're watching this, you'll probably really like it. It's not so, I mean, it's trendy, but like a young knitter way trendy, but also it's like really good texture and color. And I, I would just, yeah, I, I speak highly of her and her patterns and she's not on Ravelry. So go and check her out and support her and buy some things. And I think that's the, the scribble top for me at the moment. So I want to finish this by August, I think is the goal. We're going on holiday in August to the south of France, and I want to make sure that this is going to be worn by the pool, or I think there's a lake around. I'm not exactly even sure where we're going. I didn't book this trip at all. I just paid for it. So that is my summer top saga, where it lands, how it's going. Um, we have two more, the scribble top and the Unravelry sweater to go through, and then we're done. I have some plans for next year. I think in January, we'll try to pick it up. I have some designs uh, in mind, but that's for next year. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, what I really wanted to show you was uh, be a little bit different. And after all of that stash busting that I was talking about, I lost control and I bought too much yarn. Um, some of it was for projects and, and some of it really wasn't. The first one that I want to bring your attention to is I bought some Drops Charisma. I really want to make the Ingrid sweater junior for my nephew and that's also something that needs to be done by August. Part of it was he just looks so cute um, in these sweaters. His parents love them and I wanted to make the sweater and I was like, look it, I'm just gonna do it. I think it will get like a bit of a pattern texture fix out for me, but I also have some plans maybe for to, to really get that out of my system. So I brought some Drops Charisma in color 82. I don't even know what this is called. And we're gonna knit the Ingrid sweater junior out of him and then anything that's left out of this goes into my granny blanket. So I have a couple skeins. I have the rest of the onion yarn, whatever is going to be left of this, and then some other yarn that I am going to have left over. I don't know how much. Anyway, that once that's done, I'm gonna work on this granny stripe blanket again that I have because I absolutely love it. I've been itching to get back to it, but I have limited yarn. So that's why these new leftovers need to, to go in. It needs to be all washable yarn, which is not yarn that I buy often. Um, so looking forward to starting that again, and I'm looking forward to casting on the Ingrid Sweater Junior and doing that. Uh, another one is my Holst obsession. So as you know, I have a lot of Holst. I, my last video was about Holst Super Soft and how I deal with it and all this other stuff. Um, there's a project over here. Guys, I have the most whips I've ever had in my entire life on my needles right now. It's stressing me out a little bit. So some of these need to get off. And I was making a Holst um sweater so i was using some drops kit silk and some cone of holst in the ink color to make a redford sweater by julie hoover but this happened i ran out of my cone of holst so i had to order some more and i was fairly restrained ish 
So I, I had to order some more of the Drops Kid Silk. This is just their black color. I don't even know what these colors are called anymore. I just call them black because that's what I order. So um, this is the Drops Kid Silk in black. I needed, I probably only needed to order one. I ordered three, which is still a net Drops Kid Silk mohair like loss. Um, in terms of what's in my stash. And then I ordered two of these 50 gram balls of the ink colorway, which is what the was with the, the cone. And this should be probably right around enough. I might have a little bit of leftover ink with everything. So um, we're going on that. I've already worked through most of one of these, doing a sleeve and part of a side piece. And then I have one more side piece to do, seam them up, and then I have cuffs, hem, and collards to do. So there's there's still some knitting on it. It's been a like as it goes project. There is a Julie Hoover knit along, which by the time this video goes up is going to be done. Uh, and I am not going to finish because I also started the project mid May in the knit along started like the beginning of April and ends the beginning of June. So I'm not going to make it, but I'm enjoying making the Redford sweater again um, in these two yarns held together. It's a little bit of a funky gauge, but we're going with it. So that's acquisitions, but I also ordered more Holst. So this is my tub of Holst yarn. And as you can see, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, I ordered, so I ordered two more skeins of the Princess. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. It's just this pink yarn. I think I'm gonna be on like a self-design kick with some accessories and trying some things out and some texture and maybe some like Nordic knits. I don't know. I have some, I have a lot of ideas coming up and I really just need to like sit down and sketch them out, which is fine because I'm unemployed. So I have nothing but time to do those things. So I ordered some more of this princess color cause I really just like playing with it. I don't know why, but it was fine. And I, you know, like a big order from Holst is good. And then, oh, that just came out. What I ordered was a new black cone because I always have to have a black cone of yarn ready because I knit mostly in black. This is fingering weight. The color actually is black. It's not the ink. This is 500 gram cone of Holst. And it is, Lovely. I don't know what I'm going to make with it, but having cones makes me feel like a real knitter and um, having this will be used. I actually do have, I want to try and experiment with these two. This is my acru cone um, based on some like, like military technique thing. I don't want to give too much away, especially if it like doesn't hit. But I think I want to try some stuff out with these two. And yeah, that's it. But very excited to have gotten the cone. Their prices have gone up a little bit. I think this used to be 25 and I think that this is like 30-ish now. I don't really recall. But that's my Holst haul and my, my latest ones about that. And one last one. So... I lost control. I really did. West Wool has been having a sale for forever and I held off because I was doing all of my stash busting as you can see in like a couple of videos back there are a number of them. I really just like went through with the yarn and I got through it and I was like, yes, we're good. And um, I didn't I didn't buy this yarn. I like it. It was my first sweater. My first Redford actually was made out of it and it's holding a beautifully, it's a wonderful type of wool and then also I mean, not that Stephen West particularly needs any any help with uh, his business, but um, he's local and I like to try to support that. And they were like, okay, you guys, we're reducing these to 10 euros a skein from 22, I think before they were down to 15 maybe. And it only comes in a couple of colorways, but I mean, whatever. So. I looked on the website, I put some in my basket, and then I went to check out and I saw that the skeins were five euros each. Now, 
by the time this goes up, it, this is probably not going to happen anymore. It was only a couple of colors, but it was like five euros each per skein, which is a hundred grams at 500, uh, five euros a piece. And like, that's cheaper than drops. It's like really, really cheap for wool that I like and I, I know I want to use. So this happened. This is a bag of 10 skeins of West Wool Tandem. So this is their DK weight. And like my knitting bag, I really do enjoy this mustard color. I, I don't know what it is. I like it. I used a similar one in my night book. It was their fingering weight. So that was their bicycle, not their, not their whatever. So this cost me five euros a piece. I have 10 of these now. Um, it's not 10% text. Uh, Tessel and 90% Falkland Merino sheep. I know that this is made like spun in Germany. Um, this is the color Adam, E-D-A-M. And yeah, it's a DK weight. And I'm very excited. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of these. I might make a shawl. I don't know why. I don't particularly, I don't wear shawls. I don't wear shawls. I don't know if I even like knitting shawls but I really like needed to like cast on a, a shawl and I thought that my hoodie that I'm knitting is really going to be like shawl-esque in terms of like texture and how I want it to proceed and when it breaks and stuff like that but that's sort of been on the side while I've been doing the summer knits and then this comes into my life and I just don't know maybe there needs to be like a self-designed shawl um or maybe not, maybe this is a sweater, like an all over texture sweater because I've had some of those ideas as well. I don't really know. We'll see what happens, but it's going to be in my life and mostly in my closet for a while until I figure out what to do with it. And that is the last of my big acquisition purchases. I don't think I really, there are a couple of other things that are gonna come up in the next episode because I've had these planned out a little bit. Uh, but yeah, those are the big ones I want to do. I'm sure that this episode has started and stopped like a thousand times and it's gone on so long. So thank you for those that have made it this far and continue to watch. I really appreciate it. Make sure you give it a like, thumbs up, uh, comments. Tell me about your pride. Tell me about your knitting or something like that. That's really, I enjoy hearing what everybody has to say about things. I don't get in any comments, but that would be, uh, yeah, I like, I wanted to build community and try to get people going. So that's, that's, that's something. Take it or leave it. Anyway, it's a beautiful day out. The sun is calling my name. I will see you guys in two more weeks and have a good time knitting. And I hope that I inspired you and you go and buy from indie designers and donate to people and have a lovely time and just put good into the world. I will see you later. Bye.